The information featured in this program is general in nature and therefore should not be relied upon. Guests appearing on the program may have commercial arrangements with some of the companies mentioned. Before making any investment, insurance or financial planning decisions, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether or not your decision is appropriate for you. Property Investing Matters is brought to you by Destiny, empowering investors to achieve success through property investment for more than 24 years. Thanks for joining me for this special edition of Property Investing Matters. I'm pleased to have on air tonight a very special guest whose life's work is about protecting the consumer in real estate transactions. As we have so much to get through tonight, we won't be taking your questions for this evening's show, but if you do have any, you can still get them to me for inclusion on next week's show by simply emailing them to pim at mypropertytv.com.au or sending them to me via a direct message. And joining me tonight is Neil Genman. He is Australia's trusted real estate author and consumer advocate. Neil started in real estate as an office boy in 1972. By the mid-80s, he owned one of the country's most successful agencies. This led, to Neil, led Neil to training agents on his methods, which were all based on client care and ethics and became known as the Genman system. Neil now writes books and articles for consumers and he has had around 2 million copies of his five books published. He also heads up Genman Support, a free service for consumers, which shows them how to sell, buy or invest in real estate with safety. Now tonight we're talking auctions and the tactics to be aware of when buying or selling real estate. Let's welcome Neil to the show. And how are you doing up there, Neil? Hello, Margaret. I'm doing well, thank you. I uh, just noticed on your introduction there, um, you said that the information that we'll be discussing tonight is general in nature and should not be relied upon. Um, I was just wondering if I could say that my information can be relied upon and it will not be general, it'll be specific. You know, when you uh, read books sometimes, uh, the book will start off with a great, or it'll have a great title. It'll say, like, you know, buy my book and I'll show you how to get very successful. Then you open the book and it says, please ignore anything, I, anything that's written here, I take no responsibility. So when I wrote my first book, I wrote in the, in, the, in the title page, I wrote, the author accepts responsibility for what's written in this book. And a lot of people said to me that that was very different. So I would just like to say that some of the things we're going to be talking about, they mean a lot to me, Margaret, and I, I don't want people to think they can't rely upon them. I want to say that they can rely upon them because I will show your listeners tonight, or are they listeners or viewers? Both, viewers. Right? <laughs> but viewers. I will show them how they can be millions of dollars better off and I mean it. Excellent. Mm. Well, I'm looking forward to getting started. So let's start with one of, let's call it one of your favorite topics because of all of the problems that I know that we're going to uncover here. But we're going to start with the auction process. Mm. You're not a fan of auctions. I know that after many, many discussions that we've had. Can you tell my viewers why that is? Well, I'm not a fan if you're selling a property. I'm certainly a fan if you're buying a property because when I was uh, a younger fellow, I bought many, many properties at auction and uh, I made a lot of profit from those properties. So it depends which side of the fence you're on. The problem I have is that the consumers are not given the correct information about auctions. And uh, probably the, the, the greatest lie that is perpetrated in the real estate, and it's probably the biggest lie that's going around at the moment, is that sellers are told that if they auction, that's the way to get the best price. And it's not. In fact, it's mathematically impossible to be assured of getting the best price at auction. The best you can ever do at an auction is get the second best price, a little bit above the second best price, but you can't get the best price. And every weekend at auctions, Margaret, uh, you know, uh, it breaks my heart because I know how, how hard people have to work to actually purchase a home and what it takes to buy a home. And then they sell that house and uh, in a few seconds, a few, really, literally a few seconds, maybe 30, 40 seconds, they, and that's when the crunch comes at the end of the auction, of course, they can uh, destroy money that they couldn't earn in their own businesses or in their own jobs in 10 years. Mm. And I see that all the time. 
Yeah, Neil, let's unpack this just a little bit, if that's okay yeah. with you. You have said that if you go to auction, you will get the second best price. Yeah. Why mm -hmm. is that? Because at auction, Margaret, here's the problem. At auction, everybody gets to see what everybody else is bidding. And they call that, they say, it's a very transparent system. Now, there are some things in life that we don't want to be transparent. Transparent is not necessarily a good word. And when you're selling a property, there are some things that need to be kept private. Well, one of those things is the amount of money that each purchaser is, say, offering for your property. So when you gather a group of people together, and let's say, let's take, for example, let's, let's say, to make it simple, we've got, uh, say, two bidders at the auction. We might have a big crowd, but there's only two genuine bidders. And the problem with the auctions is that the auctions focus entirely on the lowest price that the seller is prepared to accept, and that's called the reserve price. Whereas I say, if you're selling, your focus shouldn't be on your lowest price. It should be on the highest price that the buyers are prepared to pay. Now, the agents, they call the seller's lowest price the reserve price. What do they call the buyer's highest price? Do you know? No, I don't. They don't even have a name for it. That's how little regard they give to it. They don't have a name for it. So what I do is I call it the BHP. And we can remember that because of the big Australian, right? The BHP stands for the buyer's highest price. So let's say there's two buyers at an auction, and one buyer is prepared to pay, has got a maximum price, that's all they can pay is 1.5 million. And the second buyer, they can pay 2 million. And let's say, it's, coincidentally, the reserve price happens to be 1.5 million. When the bidding gets to 1.5 million, and that bidder, the first bidder who can pay 1.5 million, bids 1.5 million and can't pay any more, what does the second buyer offer at the auction? Probably 1.5. Oh, one million. <laughs> oh, you're, you're being very careful with your money, but let's be generous. Let's say they're not as prudent as you and they offer 1.6, okay? So the, the second buyer offers 1.6 and then there's nobody else, nobody else to push the, 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 the second buyer up and the auctioneer says, sold. And the auctioneer then tells everybody to clap, which is which another thing that makes me just so wild because this is just a control freak tactic that they use. Everybody claps. And then the people say, well, gee whiz, the seller sold for $100,000 more than their lowest price. And the buyer says, yes, but I bought it for $400,000 less than I was prepared to pay. Mm -hmm. And Margaret, that doesn't just happen at some auctions. It happens at almost every mm -hmm. auction, almost every auction. Mm -hmm. And what does the real estate industry do about this? What do they do? Well, what they do is they run courses for real estate agents. And I'll give you the name of a course here. This is a course run by one of the real estate institutes. It's, it's at their auction interest group seminar. And the topic is, what do you say to the vendor when the purchaser is about to sign the contract and has a bank check for more than the 10%, meaning he or she would have paid more? So, for instance, the man who, uh, or the buyer, or the man or the lady who was prepared to pay $2 million for that, for that property may have been told to bring along a 10% deposit. So they brought along a bank check for $200,000 and they buy the property for $1.6 million. Well, instead of the agents trying to figure out how they'll get the 400, 000, extra $400,000 for those poor people that trusted them. Now they try and figure out an excuse to cover it up. Mm. And this is, this is a, I can tell you now that if the public knew what the agents say about them behind their backs with auctions, nobody would touch, touch, touch an auction again. Australia is the only country in the world, Margaret, where, where real estate is sold by auction. Uh, commonly sold by auction. In other countries, when you ask the agents and tell them what's happening in Australia, they say, why would you want to use a system that uh, undersells a property? Why would somebody want to auction a property when you when you can't get the highest price of your auction a property? Mm, yeah. So what you can do, when I talk about getting the second highest price, a little bit above it, in that case, the only person that ever offers their best price at an auction is the second highest bidder, or all the underbidders actually. So in this case, the second highest bidder offered 1.5 million. And the highest bidder offered 1.6, which was mm. a little bit above the second yes, one. Yes, I can definitely see the problem there. Now, Neil, yes. I've got some figures here that I'd like to just uh, present to you. According to SQM Research, last yeah. Saturday, 13th of June, there were 1,708 properties scheduled for auction. So, you know, we know from all of the things you're saying that auction is a flawed process. But why are so many people choosing auction to sell their properties? Because the real estate agents are conning them. That's why. The real estate agents are saying, uh, you know, put your property to auction and you'll get a higher price. You might, but you won't get the highest price. So the real estate agents are saying, 
you know, uh, look, we'll get a crowd of people together and that crowd will all start bidding and they'll all bid the price up and we'll have a reserve price that will stop you from selling too low. So that, you know, if you get above the reserve price, that's great. See, once again, the focus is on the lowest price. Margaret, imagine this for a moment. Imagine these poor, and, and you know, you say 1,708 people last weekend. Do you know how many people are coming to auction this weekend? No. 4,200. Mm, crazy. Honestly, it makes me feel like, I, I feel like such a failure. What have I done wrong here? You know, for, for 25 years, I've been uh, warning people about not selling at auctions. We had a, we had a, I, I'm living on a farm now, as you know, and there's a farmer just up the road from us. He wanted to sell his farm. I've known him since I was a little boy. And I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, butt, butt in too much with my neighbors if they want to sell their property. If they come and ask me, of course, I'll tell them. But this one, I just thought I'll, I'll sit back and watch the disaster ha unfold. And uh, sure enough, it went to auction. They were hoping to get nine million, Margaret. They sold at auction for 11 million. So they got two million above their lowest price. The buyer was prepared to pay 15 million. So they undersold the property by four million dollars. Now, I, I want to say this to you. If you could sell a property for two million dollars, if you can, if that's the maximum potential, the maximum value of your property, if you can sell it for two million and you sell it for 1.6 million, I don't care which way you want to cut things or which way you want to say it, you're four hundred thousand dollars worse off. Mm -hmm. And real estate just like to say, Oh, a property is only worth what a buyer is prepared to pay. Well, yes, that's true. But at auction, the auction system does not let the buyer pay what they want to pay. Mm. I, mean, I had a lady, a lady the other day, a buyer's agent. She said to me that um, she saw a bidder increase their own bid. And she, she hadn't seen that before. But so, for instance, the, the bidder bid, you know, one million six hundred thousand, and there was no other bidders. So he said, "Well, I'll bid one million seven hundred thousand," and the auctioneer wouldn't take the bid. Mm. He wanted to pay more, but the auction system wouldn't let him. Mm. Now, um, it's you know, and it's like, mm. So on, on this show for a long time now, I've often talked about the fact that we read a lot of media reports about the fact that properties are selling for X amount over the reserve. It might be 200,000, it might be 500,000, it might be a million. And of course that all makes uh, the property market sound like it's rocketing along and it also makes it sound like the auction process was wildly successful. But there's a problem, isn't there? Because the reserve price is a smokescreen in more ways than one. Yes, yes. Margaret, the, we're focusing on the wrong price. If you want the best price, you've got to focus on the best price. You know, in life, they say whatever you focus upon you know, is what you get. You know, if, you, if you're having trouble in your relationship and you think you're getting a divorce, you will. You know, if you, if you uh, think something bad's going to happen to you, that's kind of what happens. Well, with an auction, you're focusing on the wrong price. Instead of focusing on your lowest price, you should focus on the buyer's highest price. Now imagine this. Imagine that um, at all these auctions this weekend, and the crowd rocks up, as they call it. You know, they like these, these terms, rock up. Here they go, they rock up for the auction. And there's 10 bidders there. And the auctioneer suddenly says, can you hear me all right? Because we seem to, the screen seems to have gone a bit funny. Yep, we've got you still. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So, so the auctioneer suddenly says, ladies and gentlemen, I've read out all the terms and conditions to you. What we're going to do today is just a little bit different. Instead of each bidder publicly bidding, I'd ask you all just to write down the best price you're prepared to pay on a bit of paper. We'll put it all in a hat, and we'll open them all up straight away, and whoever has offered the best price, they're the ones that'll get to buy the property. Now, wouldn't that cause a stir? The Sounds buyers like a great way to do it. it. <laughs> now, that's what's called, that's what's called, that's the way they do it in Scotland, by the way. And as you know, the Scottish people are some of the um, most frugal and prudent in the world for their money. Mm. It sounds like a great way to go. Um, I guess one of the things that always worries me, and I've seen it happen, and I've had it happen to me many, many years ago, where yeah. the agent works very hard on the seller to set a low reserve because, yeah. first of all, not a bigger difference to the real estate agent in terms of their commission. You know, 100,000, 200,000 doesn't make a huge difference not in the commission. Not. And when you set that low reserve, there's more chance that the property goes on the market. I've seen agents really work hard on sellers to help them to set these low reserves. And often the reserves are set far lower than what the seller really wants to get. Of course. I had a, uh, a policeman say to me the other day that he was watching one of these auctions where he saw these young uh, agents 
standing over these elderly people. He felt he felt like going up and arresting them for harassment because that's how they were pushing. They, that's how much they were pushing these, these people. You know, I mean, um, real estate agents always go and spend time talking to the vendor, the seller, prior to the auction about setting the reserve. Okay, so they get, they have a meeting with the seller. They call it. We're going to we're going to come and see you before the auction to discuss the strategy. Well, not they're not discussing the strategy at all. They're going to discuss the seller's lowest price. And they'll say, look, you have to be realistic here instead of realistic reserve. Margaret, if they really cared about getting the highest price, why wouldn't they go and spend time talking with the buyers about getting them to pay the highest price instead of speaking with the sellers mm -hmm. about asking the sellers to pay the lowest price? Mm -hmm. One thing that I think people need to remember when they're selling a property is that if you're the owner of a property and you call in an agent, that you and the agent have a different agenda. Your agenda is to sell your property for the best price you can. The agent's agenda is to sell the property. Now, whether the agent sells your property for a high price or a low price, the agent still gets a high commission, and that's the, the reason. And they talk about auctions, and they say the Real Estate Institute in its training courses and says that the auction system is the fastest and best conditioning method. What does conditioning mean? It means pushing the sellers down in price. Now, why do they push the sellers down in price? Because in order to win the business in the first place, they wouldn't get the business unless they made the sellers think they were going to get a wonderfully high price, right? Mm -hmm. so, so what they do is they sign them up, and then they've got a problem. Then they've got to talk them down, and that's called conditioning. And so mm -hmm. they get them to do something else that is only done. It's very hard mm -hmm. for me to say this, but it's only done in Australia. No other country in the world does this. No other country in the world do real estate agents ask the sellers to pay the advertising money in advance. We're the only ones who do that. 195 countries in the world, 194 of them, the real estate agents include the advertising and the commission. But here, sellers are expected to pay two or three percent, which can be 20, 30, 40, $50,000 or $100,000 on, on these larger properties now. $100,000 for selling one house, plus the marketing. Mm. Now, Neil, I, I want to come back to um, all of that with regard to marketing and those other fees um, after we've gone yes. to our break. But before we do that, I want to just ask a couple of more questions about the actual auction process. And, yes. you know, we talk about auction clearance rates and we hear them reported almost as if they've now become the one and only benchmark to measure the heat of our property market. Um, but I get a feeling that these auction clearance rates have to be a little over-reported and uh, I don't think they're very accurate. Well, what do you say about that? They're fake. That's what I say they are. You know, they are so bad, it's almost laughable. It's almost laughable. I actually said to my wife about six months ago, I said, one day they're going to have somewhere where they have zero property sell at auction and they'll say that they had a 50% you know, clearance rate. Anyway, I can get you to the figures that went afterwards, I can get you the exact figures, but roughly it was like this. In Perth, a few months ago, they had 34 properties went for auction, Margaret. None, not one of them sold at auction. They released that as a 45% clearance rate. Mm. <laughs> so, how, I mean, how, this is, where are they getting those figures from? Generally speaking, you can take 20% off at least. So when they say the clearance rate is 80%, you can take 20% off. You mentioned SQM research before. Um, that's Louis Christopher. He is the most honest and only researcher that I would say that I would totally trust in this country. Now, when he was working years ago for one of the companies that was owned by one of the newspapers, he got fired from his job for exposing some of the stuff that went on with the auction system. He knows these things. Anybody, look, they all do. They, they, they count properties that are sold before auction or after auction as being sold at auction. But they're not auction sales. Sales under the hammer are often half what they say they should be. And of course, what do they call a success rate? They call it sold. I call it success rate that the owner must be happy as well. And the majority of people who sell at auction, the majority, don't get the price they're thinking of getting, even in this crazy boom that we've got on now. Mm. Well, pleased to and hear course, those comments about... Um, about Louis, he's a regular guest on our show and we always love to have him on. He's always okay, brings some good, fabulous yeah. data to the show. Um, look, b before we head off to the break, I do have a question. I think I know the answer, but the question is, are there any circumstances or any no. properties at all no. under which no. you would suggest an auction? No, it's the same. It's like asking me, is there any circumstances under which I want my daughter to marry a violent, abusive man? No. And, you know, I've got to tell you something else to you just before. Let me make this point. Almost in, in America now, 70% of the agents are women. In Australia, it's almost 50%. It's about, it's about half, okay? What percentage of women are auctioneers? Mm, not many. <laughs> you know why? Because if you ask them, they say, oh, it doesn't suit us. The bullying, 
the egotistical grandstanding, the showmanship. You know, I mean, Margaret, really, let me ask you this. I wish I had one here now, but I'm, I'm looking for a hammer. Do you really think that yelling at somebody with a hammer in their hand is going to get the best price for the owner? <laughs> and probably not. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, look, Neil, I've got lots more questions to ask you, but we do have to take a short break. We are going to come back in just a few moments. And meanwhile, if you have a question for a future show, be sure to get them to me by emailing them to pim at mypropertytv.com.au. Don't go away. We're going to come right back very soon. Thanks for staying with us for Property Investing Matters. With me today from Queensland is Neil Jenman, and he's talking auctions and real estate tactics so that you can be better prepared for the buying and selling process. If you have any questions, please get them to me via my Facebook page or by sending an email to pim at mypropertytv.com.au. Now, Neil, thanks for sticking around a bit longer. I'd like to move on now to real estate agents themselves, and you made a few references earlier in the show about them. Now, the vast majority of buyers and sellers are going to, to elect a real estate agent to sell, or, to sell their property or to buy a property through. And it's actually the law that agents act in the best interests of their vendor. Now, to me, this means that they need to give them accurate advice based on their experience. Is this what generally happens, in your opinion? No, it's not. No. Most real estate agents are working for the real estate agent. Um, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. When you think you're listing a, you're putting a house for sale, they say with a big office and there's 50 salespeople in the office, 49 of those salespeople are generally banned from having anything to do with your property because it's not fair. You've got to do the right thing by the salesperson's concern. So, you know, if, if the other 49 people get a buyer, um, well, that's, you know, no, no, you can't have that because it's up to the listing salesperson to, to make sure. Everything is done. The whole thing is skewed in favour of the agent. Margaret, the, um, I don't know if you're aware that the Roy Morgan poll, which comes out every few years on the trusted professions, has just been released for 2021. Did you know that? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and uh, real estate agents have traditionally, in 2014, 90% of the public said they didn't trust real estate agents. So only 10% of people trusted real estate agents. Of course, that must be their relatives or their mothers or something, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, do I sound really cynical here? Oh, I'll tell you what, after 49 years of doing this, I think I'm running out of time to get the message across, Margaret. But now, uh, the latest Roy Morgan poll says 95% of the public don't trust real estate agents. But of course, if you go to the real estate agents with their own rating sites that they've got now, I mean, you probably, we've all heard of fake my agent, where if you try, if you have an unhappy experience with a real estate agent, you're not allowed to put your experience on it. You can only put good ones on it. Mm. I mean, that's I can real. I can actually confirm that because I've um, I've tried to put one up myself and it never made it there. So I do. Was, uh, I you tried to put a, a dissatisfied one up, did you? Yeah, I tried to put a, a dissatisfied one up, but it um, yeah it didn't make it up. So I mean, not allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah, can absolutely <laughs> confirm that. Um, look, whether it be by process of negotiation or by auction. Um, you, I always hear agents say that as long as the seller is happy with the price, 
everything, everyone should be happy and they've done their job. Um, uh, what do you say to that? You know, I get this thrown at me quite a lot. Uh, last year, there was a property sold, and, uh, and these figures are approximate, but they're within a, a, a few thousand dollars of credit. A lady sold a property in Sydney for $800,000, and she used one of these discount agents. And the property was immediately resold for $1.4 million, almost $600,000 more. I, I'm, I'm using $600,000 to make it easier for us to follow, follow me here. But so it was sold for $800,000 and, and immediately flipped for one point four. When I, and we chased this up, and I rang the agent, the agent got angry with me because she said the seller was quite happy. What are you doing trying to, to, to stir the pot here, Mr. Gentleman? This lady, and she was an elderly lady moving from Sydney down to Tasmania um, to be with her relatives and like, she didn't know that her property had been resold for, for $1.4 million when she just sold it for $800,000. She's quite happy, leave her alone. Mm -hmm. Honestly, you, you see it all the time. You see it at the end of the auctions. You know, the agents standing there with their arms around the people and hugging each other and this sort of stuff. The best cons in the world, Margaret, are when the victims don't know that they have been conned. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens so often in real estate. The people, you, you need to say to yourself, yes, I may have got a good deal, but is this the best deal I could have got? I mean, in everything we do in life, we're taught to try our best. We're taught to you know, do the best that we can do when we go out, how we dress, how we look, how we talk. We should always be looking to do the best. It's not selfish to want the best for yourself. When you sell your home, you can't go back and knock on the door in 10 years time and say, look, I sold it a bit cheap. Would you mind sharing in some of the increased capital appreciation with me? No. When you sell your home, it's the last chance you've got to get the very best price you can. And a moment ago, you mentioned about, you know, what do agents do? Look, not every agent is like this, but I will say that more than 90% of them are. And, and even those who want to do a good job, they'll tell you they can't because the systems that they are asked to follow are skewed against them. You know, I, I can remember... I can remember many, many times being told in my life that I'm commercially unrealistic because I had this absolute sworn commitment to look after the person who was paying me. You know, of all the virtues we can study in life, loyalty is my favorite one. And you should be loyal to the person who hires you. You say agents have got a fiduciary duty to do the best thing by the, uh, by the owner. That doesn't mean they do it. In actual fact, I had conversations with a lawyer recently who said to me, and I'd love to be able to do this, a test case, whereby the sellers sue the agent for taking them to auction and in court we prove that auction is not the best way and I would like to have every auction sale that's ever been conducted in this country made invalid and all the agents have to refund all their commissions going back say 20 years. Mm. Well I'm sure that's probably going to be a little bit of an uphill battle to get that to happen. Let's talk about agents themselves and you know you are right I do know some who I've certainly dealt with who have done the right thing by both me and their, their vendor or seemingly so and some of them who are not only loyal but uh, you know pretty good guys but I also know that there are many who normally are. Girls, can I say this I don't mean to sound uh, discriminatory here but normally girls yeah okay the, well, the, the female they've actually shown in the United States that female agents get better prices also, mm -hmm. the Freakonomics people, you've heard of them, haven't you, Freakonomics? Yes. They did a study into real estate agents, and they showed that when real estate agents sell their own houses, guess what? They get better prices. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's not surprising. Now, you touched on a term that I wanted to talk a little more about earlier before the break, and that is the term yes. conditioning. And yes. I know that I was shocked to find many years ago, and I can't confirm if this is still the case, but the, that the, the term was actually expressed, uh, explained and taught in some of the real estate agent courses that I looked at at the time. Yes. Can, can you explain to the viewers, please, just what we mean when we say conditioning? Okay. Before the property goes on the market, when the agent is trying to win the seller, He's like the boyfriend trying to win the pretty girl. He tells her how lovely she is, how pretty she is, how he's going to look after and he's going to treat her so nicely. And the minute she says, I do, uh, this monster appears. And that's kind of what happens with, with, in real estate. The, the sellers, and the sellers do make this mistake because they call out an agent and they generally ask two questions. They say, what's my house worth and how much do you charge? Now the honest real, let's say the house is worth $2 million. Um, the honest real estate agent who says your house is worth $2 million may not get the business because the dishonest agent says, look, put it to auction, you might get $700 million or whatever they talk about, right? Not being a bit sarcastic here. But put it to auction, you know, you might get $3 million. So often, 
the people end up signing up with the dishonest agent. Now, once they've signed up and they think they're going to get $3 million, the agents then have to talk them down in price. So what you've got to do is you've got to give them the bad news all the time, give them the bad news. I interviewed a real estate agent from one of the biggest uh, companies in Melbourne at the start in January 2020. And I, Margaret, I'm telling you, after 49 years, I'm still shocked at some of the things I discover. This agent said to me that at the first open, the first open inspection, they have a company policy to give the sellers a bogus dummy offer of about 20% under what they know they, they would like to take. So say the sellers want $2 million, they give them an offer of say $1.6 million, a, a bogus offer. And they must do it, it's just part of presenting the bogus offer. And I said to them, what, everybody? It's not yes, everybody, all the sellers get it. I said, well, what happens if you've had, say, you know, 50 or 60 people through the open inspection, and obviously all like it, and obviously it's gonna sell very well. He said, oh no, even more important then, because when we get a lot of interest in a property, the sellers get greedy, you know, and they want more money for them, so we've got to hit them down. I mean, Margaret, in their training manual, it says this, and this is a man who calls himself Australia's number one agent, and I've got his training notes. It says this, if you get an offer before the auction of, say, 800,000, you tell the sellers that you've got an offer of 600,000. It's about conditioning the means, talking them down in price. Those who think they're a bit more ethical, they, they don't like to use the word condition, they call managing their expectations. Mm. Yeah. Neil, recently um, a relative of mine sold a house and I became involved in that to give them a hand. The yes. agent had mentioned a price that she firmly believed that, that, that the, the relative could get, said, oh, possibly even more. And then what she proceeded to do was ring every time there was a home open and say, well, the market is telling us this and the market is telling us that and the market is telling us the other, always quoting lower and lower prices each time that came nowhere near the price that she quoted when she was obtaining the business. And I said yes. to her, you, you need to stop right there and stop telling me what the market is telling me because you told me this is how much I can get and that's how much we need to get. And she was quite shocked that we called her out on that. I, know, I often put it this way, I say the agent tells the lie and the market is their alibi. And they'll say, well, look, yes, but I, I know I thought I'd get you that, but the market feedback is different. Now, Margaret, these people have pre-prepared conditioning letters mm -hmm. with words in it that say such things as we are alarmed, we are worried. You will need to set a realistic reserve on the day. I mean, I talk about, you say to them, you know, I've said to agents, so what price do you think this property will go for at the auction? And they say, well, when we revive them and we put the oxygen mask on them, that's the way they talk. I mean, it's, it's, it's look, sellers need to be more assertive. They need to stand up for themselves more. Mm -hmm. They need to say to the agent, you're quoting me $2 million for my home, so if my home doesn't sell for $2 million, what will happen? I mean, if you call a plumber out, and he gives you a quote to redo your, redesign your bathroom or something like that for $7,000 and then finishes the, the, the bathroom and wants to charge you $15,000, what would you say? Yeah, we call a real estate agent out, the real estate agent says, that, yes, I'll get you $2 million, and, and I've had this exact figure. Um, then expects you to sell for $1.3 million. And when this particular man, his name was Peter, I'll tell you his second name, but I'm happy to give you the details off there or something. When this particular man told the agent, take your sign down and go away, the agent sent him a bill for $7,000 for advertising. Mm -hmm. right? And when he told him, get lost, right? then the agent put a caveat on his home. Look, I, I, I want to talk about this advertising next because in the olden days, and you know, I'm well old enough to remember a lot of a lot about the olden days. In the olden days, you paid your agent a commission, and the risk lay with the agent. They had to sell your property. If they didn't sell the property, they didn't get paid, and they covered off on any of the advertising and marketing that they may have decided you needed to undertake. Now, it seems that you have an upfront payment to make to agents to cover marketing and advertising and all of those other things that used to be part of the service. What's yeah. going on with that? Well, this, okay, one of the first things that's going on is that the agent's getting a kickback on the advertising. So the more you pay the agent for advertising, which the agent's supposed to give to the, the uh, you know, real estate website or the, the newspaper or whatever medium it is, the agent's getting a percentage of that, maybe sometimes as much as 30, 40%. Agents brag that they call these kickbacks, they call them rebates, and they say, oh yes, but they're disclosed. And if you read the tiny fine print in the agreement, it, it is there somewhere. But it's terribly unethical. Um, and it, it's such a conflict of interest. So sellers need to, as I say, be assertive, say, 
hang on, I didn't come to see you to get to pay money for advertising. I came to see you to see if you've got a buyer. Do you know, you, you mentioned the word the olden days, which does make us both sound very old. But let me tell you what used to happen when somebody used to want to sell their house in the olden days. They wouldn't go to a real estate agent, they'd go to a hardware store. And they'd get, say, 10 keys cut. And they'd go to each agent and drop off a key and say, whichever agent sells my house for the price I want, I'll pay them. That was it. Mm. Now, yeah. there, are, there are problems with that method as well, of course. But asking somebody to pay for advertising money when you've already got the buyers, and most of them have already got the buyers. I mean, Australian uh, real estate sellers are paying more than $2 billion a year in needless advertising costs now, which are just to promote the real estate agents. That's all it is, promote the real estate agents and give the real estate agents a kickback. Because, you know, years and years ago, when I, when I had my real estate business market and we listed a house for sale, we go back to the office and the first thing we do is go through our card box looking for what buyers we'd have. We call the buyers and say, look, I have a house which you think you might be interested. Today, the first thing the agents do is put an ad online. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to ask you something now. Tell me this, and, and your viewers looking at this now. Do you, could you, are you capable of putting an ad online? And the answer is yes. Are you capable of sitting at your home for 30 minutes? And that's what agents do, 30 minutes a week. There's 10,080 minutes in a week. You didn't know that, did you? Did you know that? Mm -hmm. 10,000, I mean, I, I'm full of lots of useless information as well, but there were 10,080 minutes in a week. And the real estate agent gives you 30 minutes. Could you do 30 minutes where you could sit there? I mean, you could, you could leave a bucket with a sign saying, if you're interested, put your name in the bucket. Now, the only point that you might have difficulty with is what happens when a buyer says they want it. But I can show you what to do that, and I won't charge you anything to show you how to do that. And I'm doing it with many people now. And the people I'm helping to do it this way are saying that the buyers are saying to them, it's such a pleasure to not be cheated. It's such a pleasure to be spoken to honestly and openly. So if you can't find an agent who's a good negotiator, an agent who is prepared to take the risk themselves. I mean, if you're in a restaurant and your food goes rotten, you don't go back to your old customers and say, pay for the food I had to throw out. You take a risk. But I had a seller say to me the other day, real estate agents, they don't want to take any risk. They want to pass it all on to us. They call it in the industry, Margaret, they call it VPA, which is Vendor Pays Advertising. Well, just say no. You remember Nancy Reagan with the drugs? She used to say, just say no. Say, no, I'm not going to do this. And people say to me, oh, but the agent tells me this is the way it's got to be done. But it's your home. You're the boss. And I'm happy to you know, give people the copies of my book. I'm happy to give my book away to people. Well, they can go to my website and look and see these things. Because the greatest joy I get in my life, and I say the best thing you can have, sorry, the best thing you can have with people is, 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 is their trust. And the greatest joy in my life, Margaret, I had the other day, we helped this fellow get out of the auction system and everything like that, and he ended up getting $354,000 more for his property than he would have got it had he sold it at auction. And he said, Mr. Gentleman, you have got no idea what it means to me and my family at this point in my life mm -hmm. to get so much extra money. Neil, many years ago, I was selling my own home and I'd had a fairly recent conversation with you, I recall, not long before I decided to put it on the market. And I was pretty well aware that a lot of the advertising that real estate agents undertake have, you know, their head in massive size on the, on the billboard or the brochure, their number in massive letters, um, all the, the collateral they hand out at home opens, promote the agent, promote the agent. And I'd said to this particular agent who reassured me that they had buyers, okay, well, you say you already have buyers for my property. We will do no advertising. We will not have a billboard out the front because I live in a cul-de-sac and the only people who will see that will be my neighbours who will come and sticky beat. We won't open the house. We won't need to do that because you've already got buyers. We will do no advertising whatsoever. You will just bring the buyers to me and we will agree on a commission. That's exactly how we ran that campaign yes. and we sold the house for a street record. Yeah, Margaret, real estate agents put dodge flyers in the letterbox saying we've got buyers waiting. The owners call out the agent and the agent says, give us some money so we can find some buyers. Why don't the sellers say, but hang on, I thought you said you had buyers. Yeah, and I'll tell you something else that happens too. When the real estate agent advertises your house, when he advertises your house, the real estate agent gets other, other sellers coming along as a result of putting your house for sale. You see, one of the first questions they ask, about, have you got anything else to sell yourself? And they might get two or three extra listings from your house. They might make $30,000 per sale. They might get $100,000. And if they don't sell your in commissions as a result of the leads they pick up on your house, and yet if you, your house doesn't sell, they want you to pay $5,000 for the ads. I mean, mm -hmm. I say, but okay, I tell you what, 
my seller will pay your advertising bill provided they can own the leads that come from their ads on their house and you give them the commissions on those leads that you get. Mm. I mean, mm. let me tell you something. Open inspection, and I, and I just, if I can just share something with you here. Um, I just want to read you something from one of their manuals about um, open inspections. So let me read you this. Um, this, is, this is a training manual for real estate agents. It says, I'm constantly amazed at the waste of opportunity which is available to real estate agents at open inspections. An open inspection is not conducted to please a vendor. It is conducted to meet prospective vendors. And then it goes on and says, if you have a successful open, the best thing that can happen, of course, for those vendors is that one of the people attending buy it. But if it is a property that pulls well, and we're meeting a lot of new people, then the worst thing we can do is sell it. If the customers could see what the agents are teaching each other, mm. It's quite frightening. Um, do I, do I, am I coming across as a bit of a zealot here? <laughs> you are, but I think it's really important that my viewers are aware of the things that are happening. Now, Neil, the good proportion of people who tune into this show are property investors, and you and I have frequently talked about uh, you know, the different types of scams and schemes that property investors can get caught in. What are some of the worst ones you've seen? Margaret, I... I've seen terrible things to do with property investing. I mean, property investing and the crooks that are involved in that industry have uh, nearly cost me well, my sanity, my life at times. As you know, I was in 2005 or 2007, it was 2007, I was attacked by a, a, a property spooker and, and hospitalized for five days with life-threatening injuries. I, um, I've had my children uh, followed and uh, they put photographs on the internet and said, if we can do this, what else can we do? I had to pick my children up for seven years. I had to pick them up from the office at the school because of the threats that were made against me for what happened. I spent six years writing a book called Stitched, and uh, which my wife won't let me publish because she, she likes our home. She wants us to keep our home. And sometimes I have to sit back and I have to, I have to keep my mouth shut as I watch people lose their retirement money, their superannuation money, all because of the crooks that are in the real estate industry. Now, you know, I've just spent the last, I don't know how long it's been, um, you know, being quite uh, critical of real estate agents. But I've got to say this, if you're going to buy a house for investment, um, I don't know anybody that's been ripped off badly by going and buying a property from a real estate agent. Where they get ripped off is when they buy these track housing, these cookie cutter properties. They go to these people that say that they're specialist investment experts and uh, they're getting, and buyers agents these days who are getting, and I believe, of course this is illegal, they're getting a commission from the seller, the developer to sell the property, and then they're charging the buyer ostensibly to find the property. And uh, it's really, it is really, it's the worst it's ever been. Back in the, uh, in the late 90s, uh, one of the country's finest journalists, Hedley Thomas, uh, wrote in the Courier Mail about uh, these scams. They were called two-tier marketing in those days. And the valuer, Ian Harriet, who's worked very hard to try and stop this sort of thing. I mean, he had his boat, uh, I think, burned down or destroyed or something like this. Um, Hedley Thomas, because of the work that he's done, had bullets fired through his house. I don't know whether into his home. I don't know whether that was from property spruikers or not. But I'm telling you, these are nasty people that we are talking about here. And there is more money in ripping off property investors than I believe that there is in drug dealing. Mm. I've, seen, I've seen properties sold, and you have too, Margaret, I would imagine. For nine hundred thousand dollars, where the people couldn't get five hundred thousand dollars when they went to sell them again, and I think the thing that upsets me most is how so many of these people have managed to bribe so many so-called respectable people. Margaret, one of the things that I absolutely adore about you is that you can't be bought, and I really admire that. You know, I've never seen you. Uh, you know, you never come to me and said to me as one uh, real estate identity said to me one time. He said. I mean, look, there are some honest developers out there. And I went, well, wait a minute, what are you saying now? You know, oh, well, well, they've offered me, no, 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 you just say no. You know, and now mm -hmm. this particular fellow is recommending people, he's describing them as honest and ethical when I've actually written him letters and proved to him that people who are buying from this man that you describe as honest and ethical have had their retirement savings wiped out. They bought properties for $500,000 that they can't sell for $300,000 mm -hmm. 10 or 15 years later. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's certainly horrible. right. It's horrible. Um, it's horrible. It, and you know, it, property investors have got to stop believing all the garbage that comes out there. 
you know, all the things that they're told, and they'll see all these testimonials. But one thing you've got to look for, and here's the, here's the thing, when you're going to deal with a company and you see all these people saying, oh, yes, they treat me really well and they've set me up for life, you need to ask the company this, how many people have bought a property from you and then sold it a few years later for a magnificent profit? Mm. Yeah, look, there's certainly a lot of things that property investors can be doing to protect themselves. And unfortunately, I think uh, the many property investors are guilty of feeling that they're just busy with their life and therefore they hand over responsibility to other people. And before you know it, they're wrapped up in a deal that isn't good for them. They'll lose money on it and they'll probably be paying the property investment advisor to lose that money. It's, uh, it's Why don't they make, way. before they buy any property market, why don't they do this? Why don't they make one phone call to yourself or myself and say, I'm thinking of buying this property. What do you think? Mm. And I'll tell them and you tell them off the record so that we don't get, you know, slapped with lawsuits and threats and sort of violence or anything, whatever it is that we would do. But we'll tell them straight away. I can't bear to see hardworking people that have worked 30, 40 years in their lives ruin all their money because of some con person that comes along. And these people, they think it's clever. They think it's clever to... Uh, you know, sell somebody a property where they pocket fifty thousand dollars commission for themselves. I know. That's how, just, I mean, it's not it's, clever to rip people off. It's not clever. It's, it's terrible. It's, it's breathtakingly unbelievable to me, but it definitely happens. Now, look, we're running out of time, unfortunately, but I've just got a couple of very quick questions to, to tie up the show with. The first one is, in, in a few words, what can you say to buyers as being the best way they can protect themselves? In what way? You mean if they're buying for investment or buying for a family home? I guess if they're buying any home from a real estate agent, something that they might have seen on realestate.com. Okay, one of the first things I say is please don't fall for the rubbish that you don't have to like it. You should always buy properties that you like. If you buy properties that you don't like, you'll get tenants that won't be the best quality tenants. They mightn't take as good, good care of it. And then when you go to sell it again, the best buyers that you'll ever have if you do go to sell it again, the best buyers will be people who want to buy it for a family home, not investors. And family home buyers, they buy with their hearts, investors buy with their wallets. So buy nice homes. That's, that's one thing. The other thing is, is that you can't, I mean, what, Margaret, we need to find a better word on this, but when you tell people to do their research, for some reason it reminds them of homework and they don't want to do it. <laughs> but you've got to spend a lot of time doing a lot of research. And you've got to go to local real estate agents in the area and say to them, I'm about to buy this property, can I buy anything better mm. from you? Mm. you know? Very good and advice. Don't buy, don't, like, don't buy cookie cutter properties. Mm. And the cookie cutter properties means properties that are all the same as somebody else. Let's say there's a block of 100 units or 10 units, whatever. And if you buy into that block and somebody in that block gets sick or has a major financial catastrophe and has to sell quickly, and they, they slash the price to sell, it brings the price of everything down. Mm. So buy Absolutely. unique properties. Mm, and, you know, Margaret, I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, or you, you're going to cut this out or whatever, um, but I seriously believe that your books on property investing, particularly that one about uh, the 25 questions or whatever it is to ask, how many questions? 20. Is it 20, is it? Yes. Oh, well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to give them more value. Yeah. <laughs> now, Margaret, that, that is a wonderful book. But, you know, it takes a minute to read a page, and the book is probably, what, about 180 pages? It'll take them three hours to read the book read the book mm, ab absolutely um, what about sellers if you're thinking of selling your home what kind of advice can you give to a seller right now Re call, contact me that's what I would do mm. so, that what I would say. the best thing you can do if you're selling a property is call me 1-800-1800-18 or go to our website and I'll give you three things that I will tell I will, I will promise you and by the way Margaret in 49 years in real estate I've never had a complaint about me from a home seller or, or, or a buyer you know, I've had I've had people I've had agents complain about me constantly, but I've never had a complaint from an honest. I've never had a legitimate complaint against me ever. So call me, and there's three things I will say. I will never charge you any money. I will never ask you to sign anything, and I'll always make sure that I act in your best interest. And sometimes, many many times, when people call me and say they're wanting to sell, um, probably in 25 to 30 percent of cases, I tell them not to sell because they've got a good property now, and um, they should hang on to it. Mm. And finally, Neil, which of your books? should people be reading right now? All of them. <laughs> now, there, there, there's a one that I've just put out called um, The Do's and Don'ts of uh, Real Estate. I think it's over one of my shoulders. I think I put it over both my shoulders. Can you see it there behind me? Uh, yes. Real Estate Do's and Don'ts. 
And if you can guess, if you can guess where the photograph is taken on the front, I'll give you a free copy. And if you can't guess where the photo is taken on the front, I'll give you a free copy as well, okay? So give Neil a call and you can get a free copy of his book. Well, that does wrap up this episode of Property Investing Matters. If you'd like to become more educated about investing, grab a copy of one of my books and Neil's books. You can get my books from the online store at destiny.com.au or from most good bookshops. Thank you, Neil, for being here. Look, it's been, it's been very nice. I just wish, uh, I wish I could get the message across a bit more powerfully. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm, I'm seeming to fail. People are still going to watch. You know well, why? Well, look, let's keep why. trying. Let's do it again in the future. Keep trying. We're, we're no, both no. there doing what we can, and I, I know that consumers appreciate you being there. You can find Neil at genman.com.au. If you have a question or want to contact me between shows, you can email me at pim at mypropertytv.com.au or reach out to me via social media, Margaret Lomas on Facebook, Margaret Lomas Property on Instagram, and Margaret Lomas AU on Twitter. I'll see you back here next week. Enjoy your week and I'll see you soon. Property Investing Matters was brought to you by Destiny, empowering investors to achieve success through property investment for more than 24 years.